Hi everybody, Jeremiah Hales, Empower Physical Therapy. Today we're gonna to go over a pre-round, pre-workout foam roller uh, routine that I like for golf. You wanna prepare your body uh, for the swing and help keep your muscles pliable and soft um, so that they can be used well um, during your swing. So uh, let's, and it also is great for injury prevention. So kind of two reasons why I use a foam roller, injury prevention and keeping your muscles healthy and pliable so that you can move better during your swing. Uh, the first thing I like to do is address the calves. Golfers uh, do it, obviously do a ton of walking and working on the calf um, pliability is really important. And your calf muscle and a lot of your muscles are what I use the word multidimensional, meaning that the fibers run in different directions and there are different sections of the muscle um, that are kind of separate, but part of a whole. So, when you're working your calf and you're foam rolling your, your leg, but right now we're talking about the calves, you're gonna work on moving your foot through different positions and you're gonna feel different tight areas kind of pop up when you're working through those different positions. So the first position I like to do is just toe up. Uh, I'm really searching for, for tight and sore spots within that muscle belly, specifically the center of the muscle belly. And then you'll notice I'm gonna turn my toe in and now I'm going for that medial calf, medial soleus. So I'm really kind of diving in deep analyzing where the sore spots are. If I find a sore spot, and for me, because I know my, my calves pretty well, my sore spot's kind of more on the outside, I'm gonna find that spot, I'm gonna settle into it, and just kind of rock my foot back and forth, and actually get a little bit of a, like a clunk. Uh, and that's that super tight band of muscle tissue um, that I'm just trying to soften up, man. It's just unrelenting. So, um, working through that calf is really important, and then you're gonna move up into your hamstring, and the hamstring muscles on the back of your leg, um, very similar to the calf, it's multidimensional, there's different heads and um, muscles within the muscle. So you've got lateral hamstring, medial hamstring, without diving into the actual names of the muscle, we'll just kind of keep it simple. But you can see I'm turning my toe in and I get a tight spot right there, it's kind of painful. So I might sit onto that if I was actually doing this as a pre-workout um, routine. And then you can see I'm moving to the outside and I'm catching a little bit of the posterior bands of the IT band, posterior fibers of the IT band, and lateral hamstring muscles. From there, I'm gonna flow into my IT band, and you'll see that I'm working through that tissue, and once again, it's multi-dimensional. There's a back, there's a middle, and there's a front to the IT band. And what I see a lot of times in my practice is people get um, adhesions in the, um, the front part of that IT band where it attaches to the quad, it can be super painful. So you want to make sure you're attacking that in a healthy way. Um, we're going to do maybe, maybe spend like one minute in each position so we're not overdoing it. And if you find a spot that needs a little extra help, you can sit into that a little bit longer. But I don't like spending more than a minute on a spot because it really, you're pushing all the blood flow and circulation out of that tissue. And I think that can be a little bit um, detrimental to the tissue itself. So the next thing we're gonna attack, we've done calf, hamstring, IT band. Now we're going into the quad and hip flexor. Make sure if you have something in your pocket, you take it out, pitch it to the side, because you really don't want, uh, put it, we don't want to put pressure through an object like a set of keys or a wallet and then into the muscle, it can be pretty painful. So you're gonna take the roller, you're gonna go off to the side of it so you can kind of see this a little better. I'm gonna be rolling from here to here, okay? So we're gonna get on the end of the roller, you're gonna lay onto it, and you can see my opposite leg is on the ground, kind of guiding the motion and I'm using my hands to support my upper body. And I get super tight in my hip flexor, so I'm gonna spend a little time at the high end of my quad into that hip flexor region. Um, but you're gonna walk all the way down, you can see how I'm moving my hands, all the way down to the end of that quad too, and search through the whole length of that muscle tissue. Um, the quad, like the hamstring and the calf, and the IT band is multidimensional, and there's an inner part of the quad and there's an outer part of the quad, so you can move around on that roller and find the spots that are tight. Um, and from there, we're gonna move to the inner thigh. So we're hitting calf, IT band, hamstring, quad, adductor muscle groups, hugely important in golf. Adductors are a really important muscle group to allow you to move during the swing and transfer your weight under extreme uh, amounts of power and really, really, really fast speed. So, Want to make sure our adductor muscles stay healthy. You're going to lay on the foam roller. And this time, you can see I'm actually bringing my 
the leg that I'm rolling and bringing that hip into 90 degrees of flexion and I'm getting the knee into 90 degrees of flexion. I call that 90-90. So we're gonna get into that 90-90 position. You're gonna get your elbows on the ground to the inside of the roller and then you're just gonna roll your leg over that roller all the way up into the groin and then all the way down to the knee. And as I mentioned, your leg muscles are multidimensional. So we've got uh, different aspects of our adductor muscles as well. And the way you can attack that, as you can see, I'm lifting my knee a little bit. Man, is that sore. Lifting that, I'm sorry, I'm lifting my foot a little bit and I'm getting into a different part of that adductor muscle group. And then I'm dropping the foot and getting into the more uh, posterior fibers of the adductor. Uh, really important to be working through those um, different aspects of the muscle belly. Now we're out of the legs and we're gonna get into the posterior shoulder. Another really important part of the body uh, for rolling for golf and there's some really important key uh, elements to this you wanna be aware of. And You've got a bundle of nerves that go through your armpit called the brachial plexus and you have an uh, artery and a vein, major artery, major vein. We do not want to compromise that tissue. So to be safe with this, you're going to stay kind of leaned back a little bit. And if you can notice, I've got the roller kind of up where my arm meets my body. There's a muscle there called the teres major. There's a muscle called the teres minor. And you've got your lat muscle, which is a huge muscle. Uh, and they get super tight. They all kind of funnel into one little um, area, like a, a bundle of, of muscle and tendon as it goes kind of through your armpit and it can be super tight. So I really love for my athletes to work on this area and the way we do it, we can do it with a roller, we can do it with spiky balls, but the position is really important. So I've got my, the arm I'm working on, my palm is up and I'm kind of floating that on the ground. Okay, and I'm just rocking and I'm using this, this top leg. So my left leg right now, I'm, I'm working on the right lat, right teres major, right teres minor, but I'm using my left leg to kind of drive my body motion, okay? And, I'm unweighting my hip and I'm just kind of rolling through that, staying back, staying away from that brachial plexus, staying away from that major artery and vein, and just working across the back of the shoulder, looking for those sore spots again, trying to really um, eliminate those areas of tightness that keep reoccurring because I play so many swings, so many rounds of golf for you guys that are playing uh, a ton of golf. This is really important. Obviously, you're gonna be doing this on both sides. Um, Right leg, left leg, right lat, left lat, and then we're gonna work on the spine as well. So the spine, um, there's a couple ways I use the roller, and I like to do mid spine, and I like to caution people. I don't really like my clients using a roller in their lumbar spine. There's not a lot of anterior, posterior support for the lumbar spine, and it can cause some problems for some people. So where I want you to use the roller on your back um, in this way is through your rib cage, um, and you're technically your thoracic spine. So you're gonna get the roller at the bottom of the rib cage, you're gonna lift your hips off the ground, and you're gonna roll all the way up, and you can kind of walk your feet to do that. And then you're gonna roll all the way back down to the bottom of the rib cage. And you can kind of play around with body angle. You can lift up a little higher and work across the upper part of your back, which feels super good. And then you can get your hips a little lower and work on that lower T-spine working through those paraspinals. Right-handed golfers will have a super tight bundle of muscle tissue on the right side of their thoracic spine. And it's really good to loosen that up to encourage normal thoracic rotation, which basically is shoulder turn. You wanna have good shoulder turn in golf and, and for you to be able to achieve that, this is a great part of the foam roller series. Uh, last but not least, we're gonna get on the roller and we're gonna do a chest stretch. Uh, so you're gonna get the roller running from your from your glutes all the way up to your head, um, right underneath your spine, and then you're gonna take your arms wide. And if you have normal chest mobility and flexibility, your hands should be able to touch the ground easily. And then you just sit here and relax. Do some deep breathing. Let your chest expand and open up. It's really good for you. Um, if you want to, you can roll side to side and get a little massage out of it. Uh, always feels good. Just remember that these should be um, this in particular should be more of a gentle stretch, so we're really trying to open the chest up. It's a little bit different than some of the other foam roller drills that we've done today. A lot of those, a lot of the other ones are painful, but with this chest stretch, I really want to make sure your shoulders are not, you're not experiencing any shoulder pain. Uh, and if your hands start to go numb and tingly, you should take a break. Get, 
generally means that you're super tight and you need to approach it a little bit more slowly and more gently so that you don't uh, create any issues for yourself um, down the road. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, reach out to me directly and I'd be happy to help. Have a great day.